Meat City, baby. Hello and welcome back to Meat City Gaming. JD here with another episode of Battle Bites here in World of Tanks. And today we are in a new tank for the channel and a new tank for me. This is the Borask. It is a tier eight French medium tank and it's a premium tank. And I've seen this tank, I've heard of this tank um, since I've been back. I hadn't had any direct experience with it, but knew that it was deadly and dangerous and really good anytime I ran into it. But then I saw it popped up in the store for a free XP purchase and I jumped on it. I had a ton of free XP saved up from back in the day, so I splurged. It was, I don't know, 180,000 or 190, somewhere in that range, uh, but I, I had to pick it up. I, it seemed too good and too fun. And man, I have had it for two weeks now maybe, and it's living up to the hype. It might be my new favorite tier eight tank. I think easily uh, this surpasses the T110 or the T95 uh, E2 or three or whatever it is. Uh, the Type 59, they don't hold a candle to this thing. It's awesome. So we're in a standard battle on Fisherman's Bay, and this is gonna be an intense one. It's gonna go back and forth, and it's gonna come down to the wire to see who can win this game. And there's gonna be some decisions to make at the end of the battle, and we'll see if those decisions work out and whether they were the right decision or not. So I'll be interested to hear what your take on those decisions are at the end of the game, if they were right, if they were wrong, what you would do if you were in that situation. So one of the things the brass does fairly well is it's sneaky. It's a very small tank. It can fit into bushes. Um, so I'm in this uh, kind of a slightly advanced bush, bush position. I'm not all the way over on the one line hiding behind the houses. I'm a little bit farther forward. I'm tucked in the bush here and we're just putting out some shots. Anytime I get a chance to take a shot at something, I'm doing it. And you can see even when the light tank there on the enemy team was kind of doing a little circle in the open field at pretty close range, definitely in detectability range, we still didn't get spotted because of the bushes it combined with the camo. And yes, I, uh, I started enjoying this tank so quickly, I did go and put a permanent camo set on it. Um, so it is sneaky, yes, check that off the box. Small, fits in uh, small bushes, can scout, has decent view range from what I've seen. I don't think it's gonna outspot a light tank unless you dedicate yourself to that. Okay, so I saw this flank going well. I thought we had like four tanks pushing on three tanks, and I thought, okay, if I add myself to this push, we're gonna work our way through here, strike through the, the enemy defenses, and then we'll be in behind, and we'll sweep through the artillery, and we'll clean up this game, no problem. And I get about three quarters of the way there, and all of a sudden, all the friendly tanks that were doing this push start dying, and I realize we are in a little bit of trouble. So what am I gonna do here? Well, now I'm spotted, I hold up, and I start to back off slowly. One of the things about this tank is it has an autoloader, and it's a two-shot autoloader. So I think it's a 360 damage per shot, two in the clip, so you've got a 720 damage per clip potential on average, and then you have like this 20 or 22 second reload depending on your equipment, and so it can do a, a nice little punch, but it can't go toe to toe with the sustained battle. So I realized there's too many hit points on the enemy team, too many tanks over there, and I didn't see anything that I could snipe on low health. So I bailed, I cleared out, and then as I was coming across, holy crap, almost ran right into a tank in the mid ridge there. And then thankfully I was able to kind of bend around and use the building as cover from him so he couldn't shoot me as I retreated, pulled back, and now I've got this kind of swoop around to the bottom. And as you can see here, I was spotting, there's two tanks on the enemy team making a push here, and I'm trying to get a read on their health. Again, I know I have 720 damage available in about two and a half seconds uh, from when I fire my first shot. So we can put out some punishment really quickly if we can get in there and deliver a shot. So there's an ISM here on the enemies and I'm going for it. I'm gonna dive in here. He is definitely a one shot. I don't need both. So we're coming in full speed. I take a first, a chance with my first shot, hoping that if that first one goes in, I won't take any damage. Unfortunately, it bounces, so then I have to slow down, take my time with the second one, get all the way around to the side of the tank, and put that second shot in to the side armor, which then went through. So I thought I'd risk the first one because I thought if I drove all the way in, high likelihood I'd take at least one hit, but if I, if I snap that first shot and it goes in, I would avoid even that. Unlucky with the bounce, but lucky that the shot from the ISM missed, and so then we had our time to get the side 
and uh, and take that shot and get the kill. So after the second shot, now we've got to reload. And now we can see there's a tank destroyer here on the enemy team. Is it a T28 prototype? It was it popped up quick there. So I see this guy and I'm like, all right, another guy on low health. Let's run in there and see if we can do it. And he takes a shot, whizzes over my head and he's side on. So easy to put one in to that tank destroyer. And I go for a reload. And now I spot another tank here. Is this the IS? I think that might've been who I ran into in the middle of the map. So I looked like I was gonna advance all the way down past the IS. And the second I disappeared off the radar, threw the brakes on, spun it around, and I'm gonna come back. Now that I'm unspotted, I'm hoping he's looking the other way, thinking I'm gonna continue around on the advance in the direction I was going. We pop up, I can see he's behind the building, and yes, he pokes out, gives me the side of his tank, and there we go, another easy shot into the side of the tank. And I think that's three kills in a row there in quick succession. That might've been on three consecutive shots which is a uh, Reaper medal there. So uh, we'll see at the end of the battle if we were able to secure that medal for those kills. So now, one shot left, always going for a reload if there's not an immediate uh, combat to get into. We have 20 seconds while we're driving around. So I'm trying to come back and protect this flank. Last I saw, there were some enemies pushing on the line, on the flank that we abandoned earlier, pushing down that, or pushing up, I should say, that one line towards our artillery. So I'm hoping I can sneak in here get some vision out, help my team spot these tanks that are advancing. And if we take out one or two of these tanks, the battle will be over. We're up by one, it's five to four, it's very close right now. It's been back and forth the whole time. And here I'm making a mistake. I missed this AMX that pops up on my radar. Down in the corner, I definitely had the chance to put those shots in and at least damage, if not destroy that tank. And I just missed it. I got tunnel vision. I was looking the other direction. I thought they were gonna pop up. A tank did pop up, but I didn't have a shot. So I missed the opportunity for a kill and it cost us a tank. And so now it's four to four. But with that, I noticed now that I think I've got the read on where every tank in the game on the enemy team is. So I decide it's worth it for me to make a break and go and take out the enemy artillery. And while we do that, unfortunately, we lose another tank and so now we're down. We went from five to four to three to four. So a brutal exchange there, not going the way that we want it to, but hopefully we can take out the enemy artillery and bring things back a little bit closer. So I did sweep down and around. I haven't gotten a good read on where the artillery is. I haven't seen any tracers. I really don't know where he is. So I wanted to make sure he wasn't hiding down on that uh, JK line in that corner. They like to hide there. So now I'm expecting he's gonna be up here tucked in this corner. So we're going fast and hard and we do a little bit of airtime, no damage to the tank and the artillery's not here either. So this is definitely an active artillery player. And I think he's gotta be then pushing up to the north on this line, sticking close with those tanks, not letting anybody get in behind him and create any space. And there we go, there is the M12. We're able to poke in, get a shot, take out that artillery, the American artillery there and retreat. We see the, uh, the HMH, I think is it the HMH 51? big gun on that tank. Unfortunately, that brought this, the score. So we were up now three to two. And then immediately the Scorpion G on the enemy team takes out our GW Panther. So we took out our artillery, they took out theirs. And now it is two to two with a medium tank and a tank destroyer left on each team. A very close and mirror match battle at this point. And this is where the decision comes in. What do we do to try and win this battle. First priority in my mind is I have to get up into position to help my uh, my ally here. Because right now we're too far spread apart, the enemy are close together, and so I don't want either of us to have to engage in a one-on-two fight. That just wouldn't be, wouldn't make any sense. So instead, I come all the way back, I try to tuck into a bush, provide some cover, provide some vision, and if they spot my tank and he spots them or start shooting at him, I'm in a position to assist. So I'm gonna hold the line here in the bushes and hope that they extend go towards our flag, try to attack the Super Hellcat, and then we can hopefully take out one of those tanks or severely damage it in the engagement and keep our numbers advantage. So now I kind of play off of what the Super Hellcat here does. I wasn't able to communicate with them, so I didn't know what they were thinking, but I let them pull back, covered their retreat, and now they are making a beeline for the enemy base. And that's an interesting strategy here. I don't know what to think about that either. Is that what I would have done? I probably would have stayed and dug in, in the bush and seen if the enemies advanced to our position. But the Super Hellcat had other ideas. So he goes and starts capping immediately. So now what do we do? Well, we're ahead on capture points.
do I jump in the cap as well? If I do that, they know exactly where the both of us are. They can probably make an approach using the bushes. I felt like that wasn't the right thing to do. So instead, I tuck in in front of him. I know they started up in that top corner and I would think that they had to start advancing towards the base. So I'm thinking they're gonna be coming up over the ridge. The fact that we started capping first means they've gotta come and stop us. So I'm here hoping I'll get vision and I can put a shot in first. And then we see one of their tanks enters the enemy base. And now, boy, this the math just gets so tricky. On At this point, I could have gone into our base again and our cap would have been ahead still. But I'm thinking if one went in, they're both gonna go in. And if they both go in, then I have to be able to get back and reset. So that's what we're gonna do. We make a run and we can see they are ahead because they have two people in the base by about 10 seconds. So I'm thinking if I hit one of them one time, it'll reset the cap enough where we'll get the win. So we get a spot on the HMH. We do put a shot in and boy, the, the scores are like tied. So that's not gonna be enough. Um, it will be enough for a tie, but not enough for a win. So we keep advancing. I've got one shot left. I've got to wait. I can't afford a reload. Oh my God, I get hit, tracked once, back up. We get the shot between the buildings and it actually, I think, hit the other tank of the two, resetting it again. We get tracked a second time, so we're stuck in place. But it was enough to reset the cap by a significant portion, which gives our team the win, thanks to the Super Hellcat staying in the base and capping out. Okay, that was intense that was crazy and it was really really fast so we'll go through it again and we're going to do the approach here in half speed or quarter speed a little bit more slow so that we can look at the decisions one more time with a little bit more forethought and see if if there's a mistake to be made or a tweak that we could make to the approach okay we are making our approach through the bush again i had to beeline it for the enemy base because the cap counter was going very quickly i didn't think i had enough time to go slow and stalk and use the bushes for cover that the timer was just really, really fast in this one. So we can see that they have both uh, both tanks in the base, 23 seconds left. We get a spot on the HMH. We go for the auto aim, stop. Actually, we go for a full aim, stop, try to get an accurate shot in there and we hit it and we take a big shot in return from the HMH. That tank has a long reload. So then I start to advance and I noticed, I looked up at the timers and crap, it's a tie at this point. It's still too close for a win. So we're gonna keep advancing, trying to go, and I'm looking for the Scorpion, looking for the Scorpion, even though I think at this point, hitting the HMH would be enough. We get behind the building and I think, okay, I'm gonna take my shot now. Bang, we take the second shot in the tracks. I'm kind of stuck. So I'm thinking I've gotta get my shot off or otherwise I'm dead. We auto aim again at the HMH, but I think the, uh, the Scorpion backed up in front of it and took the hit. We get tracked again, now we're stuck. Nothing that we can do to save our tank, but both shots in the clip go into the enemy team and push the cap back enough to secure the win. So that was an intense, crazy battle with some, some real intensity at the end there and some split decisions that had to be made, not only on my own account, but based off of what my ally was doing. And so there were a lot of them and I'm open to uh, hearing anyone's thoughts out there on what they would have done. Do you agree with the approach? starting at you know coming back to defend him right i think that that is almost indisputable the only other thing i guess i could have done was jump in the cap to start the cap timer but even then that would have given them enough time to go for a two-on-one take out my ally and then probably still come back with enough time to get me those both of those tanks are fairly mobile the scorpion and the hmh neither of them is a turtle so the map is small i think they would have got there so no that that was out for me at the start so then I had to come back, protect my ally. And then when he went to the cap, I, I kind of only had two decisions again. I could have stayed right where I was and protected the uh, the friendly base, our base, and saw if they made their way into across that open field to try and cap it. But then I'm thinking, well, if they just went back down the one line to reset the cap and attack my super hellcat, again, it's a two on one situation. They clean him up and then I'm in really bad shape. So I didn't think that was right either. So instead, I kind of played off my ally, swooped back with him, and then tucked in as a frontline defender in the bushes to try and intercept them when they came in. I saw one tank go in, and this might be the, the scenario where you make a different decision. I, this was my, my biggest question. When it was one capper versus one capper, and we were leading, do I then jump in and make it two to one so that even if they jump in their second one, we're still well ahead and we would take it? 
Maybe, but again, the size of the map and the mobility of the tanks, I just didn't think that was gonna be enough. What if the HMH showed up and then got a hit into our Super Hellcat and reset the cap, and then the other team was, was gonna be ahead to take it? Maybe, I'm not sure. So instead, I played the middle ground, and when I saw the second team, uh, second guy go in, I also didn't realize that they were still gonna be able to catch us at that point, because I thought we had a big enough lead. So as soon as I recognized that, then, then the last decision would have been, can I reverse, get into the cap circle, and then would our two cappers be ahead of their two cappers? Probably yes. That would have forced them to come out of the cap, because then if I was in as well, we would have been five or 10 seconds ahead on the cap timer, and that would have been enough to win it. But instead, I kind of went for this aggressive approach, again, in the heat of the moment, maybe made the wrong decision, and decided to go. And in my head, I'm thinking, oh, I just got to put one shot in. I can put one shot in on those two tanks. Uh, neither of them was heavily armored, so I thought I would be fine. But one shot wasn't enough. That was only going to be a tie. So at the end, I needed both shots, and thankfully, we got it done. Got a little lucky with some shots going into our tracks. But man, that was just a fun blitz of a game of World of Tanks. Really enjoyed it. Got to see the Barask in all its glory. Sneaky, firepower, changing flanks, speed, swooping in. Luckily, with uh, the, sh the tracks catching some shots, and it all went very well. So let's take a quick look at the post-game stats. We can see we were the MVP there, and it was well-earned, I think, in that battle. Uh, second place goes to the M6A2E1, who I didn't really see what they were up to in that battle. And then a T69 on our team took third place. Very nice. So four kills, 2,584 damage. And that's that's a pretty good game in the Brask. Again, 720 damage per clip. That's four clips of damage going out. That's a good game. And I know people are doing great games in this thing. This, this tank can really carry. Uh, but that's a high performance for me. I'm usually getting two full clips, three full clips in a an average game. So this was definitely uh, a little better than that in terms of the performance for me in the brass. But again, I've only had this thing for like two weeks. So still getting a handle on it, still trying to figure out all of its little quirks. So one thing this tank does very well is it earns silver. It prints it. Uh, this is when I had a premium account for a limited time. I think through the uh, the battle pass, we just earned it as going through the levels. And so for that game, a good game, 74,000 silver. And that's with the premium without, it still would have been 36,000. So that's a, a decent money earner, silver printer. Um, this tank does seem to do that very well. Like I said, it, it is my new tier eight premium favorite by far. It just, it beats out my two previous contenders by a whole lot. It is a special, special tank. 4,284 total XP. That's with a whole bunch of bonuses in there as well. So for the medal count, we can see we did secure that Reaper medal. We did have three kills in a row with uh, consecutive shells. Fire for effect, a standard metal uh, bruiser. We did do some damage and injure some crew on the enemy team with all those shots we were putting out. And then a defender medal, not one that you get to see too often, uh, but 70 or more defense points. We certainly earned that with our kind of hero run at the end. And then a fighter for four or five kills. And then again, a third class mastery badge. That was just a really good, really solid game. And certainly that didn't feel like an ace tanker when I was playing it, but uh, more than a third class, that, that would definitely felt high end, second class, low end, first class. But again, this tank just seems to be ridiculous and people are doing really, really well in it. The bar is set very high to earn those mastery badges in the Barask. So we can see in the detailed stats here, 1,215 base XP, which is solid, uh, but for it to be third class, man, I, I don't know what the numbers are for an ace, but they must be up there. Uh, four kills was very good, 2,500 damage, and another 600, is that 666 um, assistance damage on top, so a little over 3,000 total combined damage. And that was it, that was the Borask. I've had some good games in this tank, hopefully you'll be seeing it more on the channel. Uh, it is, it's a tank that I'm playing a lot, trying to earn silver in, and we'll see if we can put up some really big numbers and some great results in the Barask in some future videos to come. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Again, let me know any of the decisions that you thought were the right ones, were the wrong ones. What would you have done in that situation? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you next time.